What's up guys, Justin here with theSketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about setting up grading and terrain for a project inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so there's a number of different ways that you can get terrain data into a SketchUp model. You can hire a surveyor, which can be fairly expensive, but you could definitely do it. That would be very detailed. You could try using a LiDAR scanner on like an iPhone. I've found the data that I get back from those is kind of like <laughs> lumpy um, and not always what I want, but that's definitely like a fast way to approximate. In this particular video, I'm using a tool that I talked about in the past called the Mosier 2. Pro. So this is a tool that basically uses motion-based technology to figure out like how far you've walked and also the ups and downs. So you can actually use it to generate grading data. So I talked about it in a previous video, which I'll link to in the notes down below. As always, this is a paid partnership with Mosher. I want to be upfront with that, but this is definitely an interesting tool for applications like this one um, in order to get additional grading information. And so the way that the Mosier 2 Pro works is it's motion based. And so what that means is you start with a set point and then you pick it up and move and then you set it down again and it uses the actual inertial movement of the object in order to calculate not only how far you've gone in a linear direction, but it also measures the ups and downs. And so you can use this in order to figure out different points along your site in order to generate a CAD file that you can bring into SketchUp and then you can then work with. And so one of my concerns with a tool like this is always making sure that I'm maintaining accuracy. What I like about this tool is I like to use the function where you create lines and walk in loops because when you walk in loops, you go back to your original point and it measures if your final point is close to your original point. If it is, then your accuracy is high. You want to keep your error rate under 1%. That's considered accurate with this tool. So I personally prefer setting like a base loop and then adding additional layers for additional data on the inside. Um, that's because I can set a start point and then I can make sure that that has a high accuracy level. And then anything that I add after the fact, if for whatever reason my error percentage is high, I can just redo it really quick. So that's how I like to work with this. You can also take a number of different points if you want to do that. Um, this is a good way to do this as well. I personally prefer the loops, but if you do want to just pick up a whole bunch of points, then create a mesh that way, you can do it. One thing about that is I'm not a massive fan of the way the points import into SketchUp. So it's kind of hard to create a surface from those, though I think you could just export the 3D surface that it generates. Um, so if you do want to do point by point, there's the option to do that as well. There are also some cool functions in here where you can measure lengths between different points, as well as the rise in the run using a cross section. So um, being able to see the rise um, across here is actually really cool because you can see that like across this whole side, I've got like a 10 foot fall. So you can use this to analyze the points. But when you're done, you want to take these, and you want to export them to a CAD file that you can then import into SketchUp. And in this case, I'm going to import just the loop data rather than the surface it creates because I'm going to create the surface myself inside of SketchUp. Okay. And so now what we want to do is we want to import that CAD file to SketchUp. So you can just do a file import. And I just emailed that file to myself, by the way. They're really small coming out of Mosher because there's not a ton of data in there. So you can just do a file import. You can go find that file and you can just click on import. And so it's going to bring this in with the different groups of things that you created in here with different tags. And so notice how I have the 3D points in here and the loops. I'm really only going to work with the loops. So one thing I haven't figured out, and I'm actually kind of messing around with AI for this, is I would like to be able to group each one of these points and then put a guide in the middle of them because right now they're actual like 3D geometry that comes into SketchUp. And that's problematic because I really just need the point itself and these actually come in as geometry. So I can't do a ton with them. Um, that's something that may be a future video, but for now I don't really need to because I've created these um, I've created these loops and those are going to work just fine. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create surfaces using these loops. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click in here and I'm going to clean this up just a little bit because I've got a little bit of overlap here. Um, I've got this loop running across this loop right here. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line across this surface and erase out these edges so that I don't have overlapping geometry with my terrain right here. Um, because these lines are basically the data that you have in here, this isn't really inaccurate. You're just kind of removing this overlap right here. Um, but then once you 
once you've done that, you need to create your surface, right? And to create your surface, there's a couple different ways that we can do this. So the first is you could just double click in here and use sandbox tools. So if I use sandbox tools, there's a tool called from contours, which will create a surface from those contours right here. Now, the problem with that is that it just comes in here and it just triangulates every point in here. And the points are just the um, the points that we took off of the Mosier data, which is fine. Um, I mean, that absolutely works. It's probably fairly accurate in the sense that it's triangulating across here, but it doesn't really create a mesh that's very good to work with. So a lot of the time, what I like to do instead is I like to use an extension from Fredo 6 called Topo Shaper. And the reason I like to use Topo Shaper, and I'll link to that in the notes down below is because it actually uses quads to generate a mesh. So in this situation, um, what I want to do, and sometimes Topo Shaper doesn't like group geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and explode this group right here, but I'm going to take these edges and I'm going to run Topo Shaper. Now, a couple things with this. So the first is you need to make sure that all of these loops are closed. It looks like I've got a gap here. So I can just click from this point to this point, or I should be able to, there we go, um, in order to add a junction. And then I can do the same thing over here just to make sure this is actually like a complete loop. I have no idea why this interpolates a curve in here instead of just drawing a straight line, but there we go. Um, the other thing you want to do is we want to take these edges and especially around the outside, I want to click on this edge and I want to restore the original contours because the original contour, what it does, right, is it goes up. And so this is trying to simplify it, but I don't want this to simplify my contours in here. I want this to actually use the contour data that I have. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to toggle off simplify contours. But then once we run this, we can click on calculate terrain. This is going to actually generate a terrain in here like this. And then we can go to generate terrain. And I'm going to make sure that I've toggled the skirt off because I don't really want the 3D skirt in here. And I'm going to click on Exit Tool. So now what I have is I have a surface that I can work with and I can do these calculations in here of where this footprint should go and start looking at some site sloping options. And so the first thing I want to do is a little bit of model organization. So I want to take all of the Mosier layers that I brought and I want to put them in a folder. So I'm just going to click just anywhere in this space, I'm going to add a tag folder. I'm just going to call this Mosher Data. And I'm going to take all of those layers and points, and I'm going to drag them into that folder. So then I can toggle this off. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm keeping the existing terrain data in here. So I've got the existing terrain data. Well, I want to create a tag, and we just want to call it Terrain Existing. And by the way, if you do want to learn more about grading in SketchUp, you should definitely check out the landscape and uh, civil essentials portion of my course. I can link to that in the notes down below, but it gets way more in depth on working with sites like this one um, and how you can actually create grading and other things like that. But I've got this and I want to put it on the terrain existing tag, but then I want to edit it and I want to do a copy and I want to do an edit paste in place. And for this new one, I want to add a tag and I want to call it terrain proposed and I want to tag this on terrain proposed. So you should now have one of these that you can toggle off um, for the existing and one for the proposed terrain. The proposed terrain is where we're going to be able to actually do our work here. So the next thing I need to figure out is I need to figure out how I can take this site and I can actually create kind of a flat point in here. And so ideally what we want to be able to do, and remember that we've got a fairly hard stop around this perimeter because I've got a whole bunch of trees I don't really want to touch. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to figure out a good point where we can cut some of the dirt over here and move it over here to make kind of a flat grade in here. And so the way that I like to do that is I like to start with what's known as a flat work base. I get way more in depth on this in the course, but basically it's me figuring out this footprint um, from a flat standpoint. So one thing you might do is you might draw a box below this and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to toggle my hidden geometry off, but I want to pick up the border of this face and I'm going to use the drape function in sandbox tools. I'm going to do a, I'm going to close out of this group. So I want to, okay. So I'm going to pick up this edge. I'm going to click on drape. 
I'm going to right click to get out of the group and then I'm going to click on the surface. What that's done is that's just given me kind of a flat work piece that I can now work with. And then I can move this up above the terrain like this. And I have like a flat profile of my site. And then you can go ahead and you could move these edges over a little bit like this. But now I've got a flat surface that I can work on. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that in a group and I'm gonna put that on a tag and we're gonna call this something like conceptual dash flat work base right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and tag it so that I can toggle it on and off like this. Okay, so now we're gonna start setting the footprint of our building. And so the first thing I wanna do with the footprint of my building, and actually before I even do that, I wanna go ahead and set up this site because basically what I wanna do is I wanna take as much of this as I can get. So I want to figure out how far away from the existing perimeter I want to be um, in order to start doing the grading. Because over here I've got a retaining wall condition that I don't really want to mess with. So I probably want to be about five feet from that. And then I've got trees over here, which I really don't want to cut down. So I probably want to stay about five feet away from those trees as well. That gives me the remainder of this hill to kind of work with. So what I'm going to do with this base is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, take this surface up here. I'm going to offset this in by whatever those bounds are going to be. So in this case, I'm going to offset this in by five feet. So when I do that, that gives me a surface right here that I can actually double click on. I'm going to go ahead and do a control X and cut it. And then I'm going to click out of this group and do a paste in place. And what I want to do is I want to drape this down on this existing surface. So when I do that, right here, that's draped all the edges down. Well, now I can take this interior surface, select it, and I can just delete it because I don't really want that in here anymore. We're basically gonna grade as much of this as we can in order to make this transition kind of smooth. But I can go ahead and delete out this surface. And now what I wanna do is I wanna start by roughing out a footprint of my building. So in this case, I'm assuming it's gonna be a 12 foot by 20 foot building. Right here, so I'm just going to draw a box that's about that size, and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it down. So notice how when I move it down, I can kind of figure out where on this site this is going to go. And remember, if it's higher, then you're going to have to add more fill down here, and you probably don't have that much dirt. So you want to find a location that kind of like splits the difference, so that you're going to have enough dirt on site. You don't. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have to import dirt because you're going to have to go find it somewhere. So if anything, I'd prefer a little bit of an export just because um, if we need to like get rid of some dirt or something like that, that's a lot easier to do. Um, you could just kind of move this over here and just bring this whole thing up. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like eyeballing this location in here and figuring out where is going to be ideal. Now, there's a few constraints in here that you might think about. Like, for example, I've got a house with a window over here. So I might want to move this down a little bit more so that the building isn't blocking the window. But then you don't want it to be so far down that you've got like a massive cut on your hill. So I'm just kind of moving this and figuring out a location that kind of makes sense like this. So I think this is probably going to be a pretty good one. Um, and this kind of maximizes the view down the hill towards the mountain that's over here. So I think we're in pretty good shape. So now what we need to do is we need to generate a surface in here. And the surface basically needs to take into account this footprint right here. And so what I'm going to do in this situation is I'm actually going to start by taking this object and I'm actually going to cut it. I'm going to double click in here and I'm going to do an edit paste in place so that I'm now editing inside of the terrain group. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an extension known as soap skin and bubble from the SketchUp extension warehouse. You can download this one for free. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going to use this tool in order to generate a surface. And so to do that, you need a closed shape. And so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of drawing edges in here so that I can select this entire loop in order to create this surface. And there's a tool inside a profile builder. I think this is also contained in, I think it's Sketch UV called the Smart Path Selection Tool. And what this tool does is it helps you pick up a whole bunch of different edges. I use it all the time. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to select this perimeter right here. 
like this. And by the way, we do get more in depth on this in the course. So um, if you do want to check out that course, I will link to it in the notes down below. Um, but I've gone too far with my selection right here. I want to just start again. And notice how this just kind of does a smart selection in here. It finds the shortest path. And then you can hit the enter key to finalize your selection. Well, then the tool Soap, Skin, and Bubble is going to create a surface. And you can type in a number of divisions. So in this case, I'm going to type in a value of 30, which is the maximum, and hit the enter key. That's actually going to generate a surface in here, just like this. So we're going to generate one surface on one half of this and then one surface on the other half. And remember we had to split it in halves because this needs to be a closed shape in order for this tool to work. And now I'm gonna bring this across like this, hit the enter key, and I'm going to run it again. And we'll type in a value of 30 and hit the enter key. So now we've generated a surface in here. And the topology isn't like fantastic in here, but that's fine um, for what we're trying to do. Usually what I'll do is I'll take both of these and I'll put them in a group I'll double click into the group and then select both of these and explode them. And then I'll right click and I'll reverse the faces. And then I'll use the soften edge and edges function in order to soften those edges. And sometimes there's an edge or two that you need to come in here and use the eraser tool to finish softening like this. But now I've got kind of a regraded site in here. And so then you can come in here and if you wanted this to match up, right? So I could use materials right here. I could just apply that same material to this object. And honestly, at this point, um, you could go ahead and you could take this new surface and you could either keep it as a group and then just select the outside edges and hide them. And you could do the same thing over here. So in this case, I'd probably use that smart path select again, but you could select all of these edges around the outside and hide them just like this so you have a smooth transition. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. If you want to learn more about landscape and terrain modeling, um, you can do that inside of the SketchUp Essentials course. I'll link to that on this page. If you want to check out more information about the Mosier 2 Pro, I will link to that in the notes down below. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What did you think about this video? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.